Hello, Tom Lavecchia here with the latest edition of the Armchair NBA. And I have a very special guest today. Let me introduce him. His name is Gator McCluskey. He has a YouTube channel. I came across his review of the Many Saints in Newark. It's really like a Sopranos guy. Did you have to catch up on it? I'm definitely a Sopranos nut. I watched the series when it aired. I was that guy, like a lot of us, that, you know, Monday morning water cooler after an episode aired, we all hang around and talk about yep. it for hours and until the boss yelled and said, get back to work. And it's pretty crazy if you think about the fact that people binge watch things now. But back when the Sopranos aired, you'd have to wait an entire week, you know, to see what happened, you know, yep. and a lot of times you're so disappointed. You're always like, Oh no, nobody got whacked this week. You know, you know, this yep. stuff that you'd hear, I've probably seen the whole series 20 times straight through. Wow. I kid you not. Well, so this and, is, this is even more of a meaningful review. You're not like a casual, like, Hey, I just saw this. You opted to actually go to the movie theater, correct? Oh yeah. Opening day. You know, I'm a big believer in, you know, certain movies need to be seen on the big screen screen. I, as soon as the theaters reopened, I was right back in. All right. So let's roll right in, man. So what were you expecting? And then let's jump right into the review. I think the biggest thing going in that was sort of something I was leery of was the fact that David Chase really wanted to direct this thing. And due to family issues, he had to back out. Well, that was crushing. Oh, he him. didn't direct it. He did not direct it. No, he oh, he actually turned that. it over to this director, Alan Taylor. He directed nine episodes of The Sopranos. Problem with Alan Taylor is he's never really directed a great feature film. He did the second Thor movie, which is uh, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Terminator Genesis. Well, like giving the keys to a big franchise in Terminator yeah. and Terminator screwed that one up, you know. But I think the thing I was most concerned about was the fact that the story revolved around Dickie Moltisante. Yeah. You know, I was worried that that guy was going to be good enough. Do you, you think he carried a Jersey late 60s mobster well? The problem is, is to me, he couldn't carry the film. Yeah. And I really liked the film. Yeah. <clears throat> I just don't believe that in, in any way, shape or form stood up to The Sopranos, especially on a comedic level. Like yeah. if you look at The Sopranos series, I find it to be almost a comedy first and then a drama second. Yeah. I mean, I always look back to like the scenes... And the Pine Barrens, when they're talking on the cell phone and it's all broken up and Paulie thinks that Tony's telling him he's an interior decorator, right? Because <laughs> he thinks he hears something else. And then he tells Christopher and Christopher goes, interior decorator. This house look like shit. Those lines are so great. And there was none of that in the film. Now, I believe that if David Chase would have directed the movie like he had planned, that he would have taken it to a point where he would have made a left turn or a right turn, no, as opposed to Alan Taylor, who took it and said, well, this is the script. I'm just going to go with it. But the good news is, is that David Chase apparently is very excited about doing another story. Why did Jackie Aprile become boss over Tony? Correct. Right. You want to see that story. I want to yep. see that story. Correct. So I want to kind of go through some specifics because I want to kind of get your, your opinions. I saw your review and I want our, our, our mm -hmm. audience to kind of check it out. So Silvio Dante, right? It was a little comedic. And a lot of people feel like you kind of get like that over your life. You're generally not like that young. And you would think that over time, and we all know people that as they yeah. get older, their quirks, they get more amplified. So you would imagine that the version of Silvio we saw in The Sopranos was as animated uh, yeah. quirky that you could get in life yeah. and that as a kid it would have been like a piece of it and it would have gotten worse as we went along and i don't blame him yeah. at all because yeah. a lot of people are like that guy sucked. you know yeah. it's the director's job to actually say to him let's do it again maybe a little less Michael Gandolfini lost his father. I lost my father when I was 17. If there was a bright spot will resonate with guys like us who lost people young, he's filling his father's shoes. It seemed as though it wasn't as difficult for him to do yeah. as I think a lot of it people thought because he knew that his dad was playing a character. And he was studying that. Yeah. And he never watched The Sopranos until Which is they insane. The Which is insane. Yeah. yeah. Why wasn't there more of Michael Gandolfini? I think that could have possibly saved it. Oh, 100%. If I had to guess, I'd say that maybe they didn't have the confidence in Michael being so young, being so inexperienced, that they wanted to sort of ease him into it. Maybe mitigate and it a little bit. With the understanding that he's going to be a, a, a much larger character moving forward. So maybe that's part of it. 
you know, you hold something back. The other thing of it might be an ego thing. It might be David Chase saying, you know what? I'm going to prove that I can do this again, that I could give you new characters. It is me, not them. So Uncle Junior, I thought he was good in terms of the portrayal. What were your thoughts on Uncle Junior's character? His big moment when he falls on the stairs. My theater that I was in just howled out loud laughing. That was fun to see. And that's the shame about theaters, you know, too, is like, there's a reason why you see these things in a theater. And I got to tell you, most of the people I know that saw it on HBO Max at home hated it a lot more than the people I know that went to the theater to see it. Because when you're in the theater to see it, it's uninterrupted. It's dark. The sound is good. The picture is good. You're not getting up to go to the bathroom unless you have to. The smell of popcorn. You're not distracted, you know? So you're forced to focus on it. And then there was applause at the end. I believe overall that there was more people that loved the movie walking out of it than there were wow. that didn't like it. But then again, I go around to my buddies and they're all like, you know, ah, you know, oh, I didn't like this. I didn't like that. I go, we never thought we were going to get this. This is a gift. Good point. We never thought we were going to get a Soprano story. So for me, I was so happy to have something. And I'm even happier to know that we could get something else. Something's better than nothing when you're talking about for me, my all-time favorite television show of all time. So I'm excited about the future of having more stories, you know, because I love mob movies. I watch The Godfather 1 and 2 religiously once, twice a year. You know, yeah. Goodfellas, Casino, those are my go-tos. Yeah, I love The Bronx Tale. I think The Bronx Tale is a beautiful movie. The Godfather 3, to be honest with you, I try to watch it over and over and over and over, and I just so disappointed with that more so every time i watch it <laughs> it's funny it actually grew on me over the years when i was a kid my father had the godfather epic that i'm not sure why that's not everywhere every day playing yeah so he had this big box set i think it was three tapes yeah. and it basically chronologically puts yeah. the godfather in order yeah and it's a fascinating way to watch it but the yep. big thing about it is is there's like there's like an hour or more that's of, not even a, a, as part of the three and what it was is nbc when they bought the godfather they said okay we'll give you the money you want but we want all the extra scenes and we want it to be much bigger recently cinemax actually aired it on tv it's the wow. entire epic start to finish why exactly did junior kill dicky obviously it wasn't because he laughed at because he fell was it he was worried about him rising higher in the jersey mob than him or what was the real reason why junior killed dicky but i actually do think that he was whacked because of him being laughed at because you got to remember if you look at the soprano series yeah there's some of the crazy shit that happened over the years specifically here's one so johnny sack wanted ralphie killed why I hear Jenny Sachs getting a 95 pound mold taken off her ass. <laughs> Because he made, he made a joke about his wife. Yeah. I want you to sanction the hit on Ralph Cifarello. What? Are you kidding me? Through the years, I've just come to the realization that that's how some of these people think. And if you watch that scene closely, they did the slow motion thing. They've got Dickie's face in slow motion laughing. And Junior's on the stairs and he's hunched over and he's like looking at him and this and that. There's another scene also in the bedroom. Oh, yeah. So he can't perform in the bedroom. Yeah. And it's because of the accident done on the stairs uh, and he he shows his anger again about the fact that uh, dickie was laughing at him so i uh, personally think uh, that it was a hundred percent that but the one part i did understand and which i believe you touched on what was a black uh, character's name if it's harold harold, harold. Uh, harold the thing i don't get is the character development and the animosity dickie was good to him in terms yeah. of this situation, right? The mob ruled Newark back then. The mob ruled crime, right? You don't just start a numbers game, right? And I know they were trying to do the Frank Lucas ang angle, but that wasn't happening. And not back then, not in Newark, right? So with that being said, though, is that guy kind of screwed him, Dickie, right? He screwed Dickie. Why don't you think they developed that a little bit more? Like, why wasn't he come to his car shop or wherever, wherever and like, the girlfriend's there and he's, he's maybe he's a dick to him in front of the girlfriend and he screws her later. Like that just kind of happened too quickly with the girlfriend. I thought was odd. They just didn't set up that Dickie was an ass to him. Yeah. There's no way that Dickie's Gubad would say to him what she yeah. had done. That's first yeah. of all, she would have never done it. That's okay. that, that I'll give that. Uh, that's what she back then. 
And even if she did it, there's no way she would have told him. So that scene alone was so unrealistic to me. All the other stuff you said, I think is very simply because of runtime. The movie needed to be either three hours long or it needed to be a miniseries because they jammed it packed with so many different characters and storylines yeah. there's so much in there that you would love to have known more about paulie and Correct. silvio's story you don't know anything about these guys yep. they just appear and they are who they are i believe that harold could have his own movie think about how that film ended because he had basically said that he's going to make his own money and he proved that in the end he was making money right yeah that's a story to tell. There's a, you know, you could have an offshoot movie based on him or ideally, and I would love to have had a series because to me, a series is never ending. You don't have to rush it. And the nice thing about The Sopranos, you know, when they bring in Richie April, they took their time with him and then they got rid of him. Then they took, yeah. brought in Ralphie and they took their time with him and then they got rid of him. These guys were really fleshed out and we really got to spend time with them. So when they did get killed, I mean, honestly, when Dickie got killed, I mean, did you feel any emotion? Yeah. I was I was not attached to the character. That's the fascinating thing about rewatching The Sopranos, because, you know, I'll focus on certain characters that I never saw certain things, particularly Carmella, yeah. who, you know, Edie Falco is just brilliant in that series. And if you focus on her story arc and her struggles with the fact that she's yeah. taken all this blood money, there's that one psychiatrist she sees that she makes a point to him about, like, you just want my money. And he's like, no, I'm, I'm not charging you for this session. He goes, I refuse to take blood money wow. he goes and, and now you need to do the same thing you need to Ooh. you need to pack your bags and get your kids and you need to leave i'll send you the article uh my i have another magazine that's jersey based and they said kind of how jersey was the sopranos and it did focus on like the area and some of the places and kind of like you know was it real and all that in new jersey and the truth of the matter it is and it was and it really was emblematic of the italian american experience in new jersey new york where everybody kind of knew somebody and he grew up a certain way and things were a certain way and it was about family but then it was like contradicting i remember watching jersey boys and frankie valley character is like married but he's messing around with his grandma and he mentioned something about going home or something meanwhile his mistress and he's like she's like why is it all it's all about family but meanwhile you're cheating you know so that always has been historically that dichotomy of the italian americans experience some which is true some which it and obviously gets amplified in the cinema i took it that you thought it was positive so give us kind of your net review um yeah no i like the movie and i i stress in my review that i don't believe it stands up to the quality and the legacy of the sopranos series but as a standalone mob movie you know i would probably put it somewhere close to bronx tale not quite as good if anyone's Whoa. seen the bronx tale and, and the Bronx, not like Bronx Tale? I actually really love Bronx Tale. And I love Chaz Palmetari in that. I think he's amazing. Yeah. And the fact that he wrote that and De Niro directed it. And it's a very similar story, if you think about it. The best thing to me about The Many Saints of Newark is the way that young Tony Soprano was lost. He didn't want to take speakers that were stolen. He still had some morals. Dickie at first was trying to get him to just forget all that and justify it. And then Ray Liotta, who we didn't talk about, who I thought was magnificent. Uh, those... From Union, New Jersey, of all places. Let's let's spend a minute on him before we wrap up. He's just incredible. And for a lot of us that saw the trailers, we saw him in prison. And then we watched the movie, and he dies early on. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah. what happened to the prison shot? Didn't know that they were going to twist it and make it, which wasn't I, totally I clear. I thought that was cool, yeah. And I thought he played both guys so well and so different. To me, Ray Liotta deserves an Oscar nomination for that. Wow, that's a bold statement. Michael may also get one. It just all depends on how many movies come out and how many nominations there are to pass around. This got graded with a curve for me. Like, they could do no wrong. They just had to do some jokes. Like, they had to just not F it up, and they kind of did. I don't know if watching it in the cinema and dropping... To me and my fiance, 45 bucks all in, probably more nowadays, all the crap. Maybe watch it again to see if I picked up or missed something, but I'll probably watch it from the comfort and safety of my own home. To me, it's just getting the best possible picture, the best possible sound. I mean, let's be honest. There are people out there watching this movie on their phone while they're on a bus. It's unfortunate and it's, it's unfair to the filmmakers. Some people just watch it on the go. That's the world we live in. Would The Many Saints of Newark be that much better if you'd had seen it in the theater? Not now. 
I think now it's it's resonated with you, but I think the first viewing is really important. If I could suggest anything to anybody, try to go to the movies to see these things one time, and then if you like it or if you're unsure, rewatch it at home. That's fine. We really appreciate coming on the Armchair NBA. We're kind of reorganizing here, if you will, to relaunch podcast. I think you're gonna be okay in the comments because I, I know you were a little more complimentary in your review, but I think you'll be okay. Some good guys who watch your show. <laughs> I could take it. I'm from New York. You're from, you're, you're from New York, so don't matter. Be good and thank you for being on the armchair NBA, my friend. Thank you, and good luck with the channel. Thank you, buddy.